Why would this starter armature growl at me? Let's find out why. Hi, John here. Welcome back to the channel. What am I going to do today? Well, let's carry on with this starter. So this will be part number two. Now all the parts have been cleaned and inspected. If you remember the armature, the commutator here is pretty uh, burned and it's going to need to be resurfaced. So what are we going to do? How do we know that this armature is any good? Well, I guess we could use the usual internet rules and go, oh, the bearing turns, it's all clean, and yeah, we'll sand that off a little bit, and it'll be perfect to use. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. I need to know that this thing is good before we put it back into the starter and give it back to the customer. So what am I going to do? Well, what's this machine that I have here? This is a armature tester. Years ago, when I was uh, much younger, every garage had one of these. This is what they all used when the garages actually used to rebuild starters. Back in the day there, you didn't just go buy a new one and throw the old one out. You, you fixed everything. I used to fix alternators, uh, like overhaul alternators, overhaul starters. I even did transmissions and stuff. So anyway, it's all gone now, all of that stuff. Back to the topic here. So this is to test what I'm going to use to test this with to prove that it's good. It looks all pretty and everything, well, except for that. But let's actually test it and find out, okay? If we don't test it or we don't have a number on it, we're just guessing. So how does this machine work? It's uh, plugged into the wall, 110 volts. And the first thing that we want to do is find out if it's grounded somewhere inside. Okay, so inside where I can't see anything. So we'll switch the switch to ground test. These are the probes for ground testing. And as you note, when I touch them, the light comes on. So what I want to do is I want to test this. And of course, I don't want the light to come on. So I have it grounded onto the shaft. This, the red probe on the shaft and see when I touch the shaft of course it's grounded to that it's it's uh, it's uh, has good continuity through the shaft what I want to do is I want to see if there's continuity shorted into any of the segments here so what I'll do is I'll rotate it all the way around and I'll check all the segments through which I've already done and it's fine so what's the next test well I want to find out if there's something shorted inside of the armature, of course, where we can't see. How do we do that? Well, the reason they call this a growler is, or the nickname of it was kind of a growler, is let's turn the growler on. So what's it doing when it makes that noise? It's making a magnetic field in here. See, it's holding on to that. Okay, so it's inducing a magnetic field in, in, uh, into the armature. So here's the test for this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it around and just loosely hold the, this. Um, this is just a piece of a hacksaw blade because the original little blade that it came with is gone 50 years ago probably. And see what happens. So let's do that. So it's just resting there just with the weight of itself and I'm rotating and I always go around the whole time around so I didn't get any result well I want you to see what result you get when it has an issue so let me put this one aside and let me get this one that's out of a GPL starter and let's do the same thing, okay? So here we go, I'm holding the blade on. See, it's still, there's still a lot of, it's magnetized. So let's find out what happens. That tells me that this starter armature is no good. This is the 
fun we'll rotate a little bit more you see here's some segments that are still okay there's another there's another spot in there you see just rattling on there so we'll go back around stuck on there okay so that's what it looks like when it is no good now what's the next test there's still another test because when I apply a magnetic field to this I'm inducing a voltage into it so there'll be a voltage output that'll show on here so let's do this again it uses these two leads and I'll put two of the touch two together. And it gives me a reading of 45. And then I can go to the next two segments and so on and so on. And all the way around, which I did already. And everyone reads exactly the same output. So I've just proved not only is this clean and shiny, but it actually is good. And that's what I want to know. Okay, remember, if there's not a number on it, you're just guessing or some type of a test. Clean and pretty looking doesn't mean it's good. So next thing I'm going to do is take it over to the lathe and we're going to refinish this, make it all nice and smooth and round. So this is the result of my first pass and we can see the very original finish right here it's got a cut here from a fresh cut and a fresh cut over here in the middle it hasn't even touched yet so kind of like the drawing here this is the original uh, dimension here this is where I just um, cut a couple thou off and a couple thou off over here and this is the rough part in the center here where the brushes have been running so this is the end of the uh, second pass across and you can see it's starting to cut well started to cut a bit of the way across and let's rotate it and look it's not even touched on this side yet so this is this area here is not round so you can imagine how much the brushes would bounce up and down if i just sanded that off and put it back together so here's the result of my third pass with the cutter across and uh, they're looking nice and clean and shiny. And what do we have here? We'll turn it around some more. And there we go. There's a spot where it isn't. It's almost cleaning it off. So uh, last pass should clean this up. All right. There's the uh, fourth pass. Oh, this is looking good. Uh, let's examine each one. Uh, I can see the light shining on it nicely there, reflecting. And um, yes, everyone has completely cleaned up. So that's the end of that. We don't want to take any more off than we absolutely have to. Um, I'm going to uh, get the uh, micrometer and check the dimension across to make sure that we're still within specifications. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so let's measure this up and see where we're at. Now I've just recorded um, the dimension that, that I got uh, when I read the micrometer. So how did I determine what the micrometer told me? Well, let's see if we can get this to focus and we can see. So this line here with the zero is one inch and each of these small lines here is 25 so there's three showing that's 75 now 75 would line up with this line but we've gone further so 76 77 and 78 and because we're halfway in between the next section we go and see up here what lines up of all these is the five so our actual dimension for this 
uh, measured and uh, double checked is uh, one inch and 78 and a half thousandths. So what do we have for dimensions? How do I know if this is good? Can I use this again or not? Well, wear limit is 100% wear, which is throw out time, is one inch and 63 thou. 50% is one inch and 75 thou. And uh, we measured, of course, one inch and 78 and a half thou. So we're actually three and a half thou um, larger than the 50%. So we can safely just say, you know what, this is 50%. So I'm happy to use this again, no problem at all. Um, all of these numbers I'll record on my other uh, uh, file sheet for this. Um, this is just a worksheet and I use a marker on it and rub it out after when I'm done. So there you go. That's how I determine what the percentage of wear is and can we use this again? Thank you for joining me for part two of the uh, heavy duty 912 starter rebuilding process. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and share and all those other things or subscribe too, hit the bell, let you know when something new comes out. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.